What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action, spawning in the bottom of the map in the blue color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Matrius. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Odin. He is a Smurf. His name is Lonely Fenrir. But we have the man, the myth, the legend in the chat, claiming it's himself, Rapple. Rapple is... The uh, the Smurf sitting in the top of the map in the red color. The map is Oasis, and you guys wanted Matrius games. I got Matrius games. Let's uh, let's see how they go. We've got the uh, the Oasis map here. Oasis Poseidon versus Odin. This is going to be an exciting one. Odin versus uh, Poseidon. Poseidon versus Odin is one of the uh, more tricky matchups. I'd have to say. Lots of very, very um, rock, paper, scissors esque strategic decisions to be made, uh, it to be made in order to get wins in uh, in this matchup for both players. Uh, and there's a couple of very, very difficult maps for both sieves, respectively. For example, Marsh very tough for the uh, the the Poseidon player uh, due to all the hunt get, uh, allowing the the Odin player to skyrocket in front. Uh, and, and then there's also like Anatolia, which is super good for the Poseidon player, or or even Mediterranean. I'm watering whole good for uh, Odin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's definitely ways to win uh, both matchups in every single map. Just have to play well enough. That's the secret. We've got some relics on the map. We've got the Scarab Pendant up here. This relic is bonkers. I tell you this relic is bonkers. If you guys play... Okay, let me just start by saying, if you guys play on Extended Edition, and you play with the Chinese, and you play specifically Shenong, this relic for Shenong, it, it, it makes Shenong tier, S tier, plus, 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 cannot beat that god. That god is the best god in the game with this relic. Um, but if you're playing on Vubli, you have no access to that, and it's still an incredibly good relic. Gives your, your Portable Rams, your Heliopolis, your Siege Towers, 100% bonus damage versus buildings. That means that if you have one siege weapon, that is equivalent to you having two siege weapons worth of damage. That's insane. That's good. Um, the other relic on the map, we've got the Pygmalion statue. Now, if you thought that the uh, if you thought that the Scarab Pendant was good, the Pygmalion statue laughs at you because it says, you know what? You're probably not killing any of my villagers this game because my villagers have got an extra 40% HP, keeps them alive for yonks. They're already strong with 65 HP and fairly decent armor stats considering they're not really wearing anything if you look at these guys they're kind of just in a loin cloth and a belt and he has a little little dagger that he's using to cut the uh the deer up but i mean 25 percent hack armor i've seen uh i've seen spearmen with less uh less hack armor than that and i don't really see any real defense against the pierce armor either i think maybe this uh age of mythology game has got the old villager stats all incorrect here with that um with the armor that they've got just as a random thought, as I'm randomly discussing this, like maybe this game would be interesting if we lowered the um, the hack armor, the pierce armor of villagers down to five percent apiece. Maybe that would be very, very interesting. Maybe it wouldn't be at the same time. We are seeing the scrambling for lonely Fenrir taking a lot of damage. He's Odin though; it's going to heal himself back up over time here, and we'll see how this is all going to go. The Ravens now pushing forward here, going to be chucking up. The house is doing all of the good stuff. What's the armor and HP of other Civsvilles? Uh, so all the villages are 65 HP with same armor. Uh, the dwarf has 75 HP, so 10 HP more. This is why oftentimes you see uh, when people, when Ra players specifically cast Locust on enemy dwarves, a lot of the time the dwarves live with a very, very low HP um, just because they got that extra 10 uh, 10 HP. Uh, the Citizen has obviously a lot more HP as well. I don't know what the numbers are off the top of my head, but that's uh, that's very, very good. Can we please uh, stop with the no why this game mattress? Come on, it's a good game. 100% a good game. Alright, now we've got 
We've got Matrius moving around the map with his Theseus looking for someone to pick up. We've got the uh, Ulfsuck now just moving up. He does spot the Pygmalion statue. Lonely. Uh, wait, what did he, what happened there? I guess it's just some garrisoning. Still haven't seen any Hursa action coming over onto this location here. We do see the Theseus making his way in to grab this relic. He wants this one and he's going to get there first, it seems, as the Hursa not even going to try and contest that one. The Theseus gets the stupid, stupidly strong Pygmalion statue to start the game off and that's going to be a big big bonus in uh mantras keeping his villagers alive in this game now we see the wooden walls coming up for Matrius. We've got the uh lion moving into the home base here with this lure being cast very very late potentially uh potentially this lure was thrown down late to steal to attempt to steal some of uh rapples uh hunt if you could potentially get lucky with that or even just to find some of the random monkeys and bring those in because 750 food is 750 food or is it a thousand food is a thousand food uh regardless of what type of food it is these monkeys they've only got um 45 hp so you can kill them with a town center and a couple of shots and it's going to be completely fine for you and now we see villagers moving forward going to be grabbing the giraffe on this location as the Valkyrie going to be running around doing its thing. We've got the Santa chilling out over here as well. It's going to help with the defense getting the special attack off, doing a ton of damage there to the Valkyrie. And unlike the human units, the Valkyrie cannot reheal itself. So you need another Valkyrie in order to heal up your your first Valkyrie. And there's one Hippolyta to shot. I'm surprised that hit there. That? I'm not sure that should have hit. Hippolyta's not drunk this game. She she been she been eating some apples or something because she can see very straight. No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, don't 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 mind me. I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm saying. We do see the raiding cavalry pushing in, pushing Matrius off this uh, giraffe, but I'm sure he's not actually that upset about it because I'm the giraffe's really far away from his granary. <laughs> You see the Santa getting surrounded here. Nice play here from Lonely Fenrir. You see the uh, Valkyrie getting sniped. The Santa going to attempt to retreat away. 7 HP remaining, 2 HP remaining. And he does keep this one alive. No, he does not. Get sniped there as more raiding cavalry coming in onto this location. As what is Matrius doing? He's just playing defensively. He's getting his second town center up. Trying to sneak this one up. But the Raven, the map hacks of Mr. Rapple here. Flying overhead. Will spot that town center going up, and surely he sends something over there to take that one down. We do see the Raven here is checking out these villagers who are just chilling on this location here. Um, but the uh, Hippolyta getting sniped down by Lonely Fender. A nice play. Oh, trying to snipe that Raven there, but not going to quite get there in time. But Mantri is going to have two town centers in this in this game now. So we'll see how he's going to go with it. Um, one thing that... I would like to see a little bit just tried. I don't know how much it's been tried here, but seeing as we've got Poseidon Mans in the chat, they, they might want to give it a go. Um, what I want you guys to try a little bit here is instead of going for this second town center, go for um, go for a, a full pop cav, fast hero a full pop cav heroic age, utilizing your goats and your lure to help you get there. And then once all that food runs out, throw everything over to gold, mark it, and then buy your way to the Mythic Age and go for a really big um, Artemis uh, timing push with the Chimera to boot and see if that works. I'll probably see Matrius say uh, that this is terrible and will never work, but you never know. Maybe it's not terrible. Maybe it's pretty good. But right now, Matrius is two down centers. He's going to be feeling pretty good about himself. But now all the initiative is on the map for our Odin player Rapple, getting his own second town center, opting to get that one here, not going for any sort of one town center, uh, semi-fast heroics or, or, or semi-fast mythics or even full pop raiding cavalry here, just getting his town centers up. This town center does chop the map up a little bit here for Matrius, and we are seeing this villager getting sniped down, even with the 91 HP, does still die eventually here. We're seeing more stables coming up. These walls getting denied. If Matrius can get this wall up, it's going to be huge because it's going to be able to allow Matrius to just grab this gold mine over here and be very, very safe. We see some militia in here to help out as uh, Rapple pushing in, going to try and take down these units here. It looks like he's not happy to take that fight underneath the town center fire with all of those Hippocon there. And he's just going to pull back for the time being here. Uh, one thing that Rapple could definitely do here 
Considering Matrius is playing really defensively, is go two town centers here and then just stop building units and go straight to the heroic age. And then he can chuck down his hill fort and or go for like a timing push with um well with uh with full units and, and frost and take down the town center or something. There is a there is a ceasefire you have to worry about, but if you get the ce if you get ceased then you can just go straight mythic age. Um, or even just go straight Mythic Age. Skip. All of the good things. Just depends on how much value you feel like you can get out of your Raiding Cavalry. And at this point, it's looking like Rapple is getting some good value here. We're seeing the villagers getting pulled off of the gold mine. Potentially going to get a, a, a sort of surround here. The villagers, the villagers, they should, they, all these villagers should have been dead. But Big Malian statue saved three of them. That's how good that relic is there. They all should have died. So, nice play from Matrius in making the effort to get that relic in the first place. You see all these villagers on the uh, on the goats here. Farms slowly starting to come down now for Matrius. Going up to three town centers. Matrius looks like his, his goal in this game is to hold Ragnarok. Simply put, hold Ragnarok. You see the villagers getting pulled off the town center. Going for a bit of a villager fight. He does have, well, I'll say it for the millionth time, he does have Big Malian statue. So these villagers are going to stay alive for a very, very long time. And that's going to help Matrius hold on to this location. The villagers, he is going to be losing one, it seems. Trying to micro that one away for the time being. But does end up losing that. More raiding cavalry coming into this position. Villagers getting pulled over here to try and take get this town center up. We do see the medium cavalry coming through for Matrius. But these villagers should be able to come in and help out just a little bit we do see one villager still getting this one up and the raiding cavalry have to dip here as he's as uh as rapple realizes he does not have any real avenue to keep pushing in more push units here. pushing into this location we do even have some of those militia here to push rapple away and there is the town center up living the absolute dream here for matrius pumping all of these villagers out doing the good stuff we see the villagers moving over into the home base now for Matrius. And we'll see how he's going to go, where he's going to go, and what he's going to do. Not putting this wooden wall up in the middle of all of this shenanigans here is a little bit surprising for Matrius. It's one of those things he's... Now he sends the villager. Okay, okay. He, I was going to say, it's just one of those things that he does really well is when he gets distracted, when he's distracting over here, I'll often see, whenever you watch him stream, he's often like moving around and doing a lot of cheeky... Um, cheeky villager shenanigans getting uh, getting walls up when, in places he otherwise shouldn't but we do see this raid hitting these villagers yet again a lot of villagers surviving this raid uh, only losing two here when there was like full a bunch of raiding cavalry on this uh, location and now Rappel's going to have to sort of retreat away from this uh, once the uh, Hippocon come in for Matrius but it's looking like uh, it's looking like Rappel He's getting still more value, but more Hippocon coming in. Maybe going to be able to trap these in. We do see some walls over here. That's going to be really, really important here uh, for matches. If you can actually get the wall across here as well, potentially these uh, these raiding cavalry would be uh, would be trapped. A wall here, wall across here. Um, that could be huge here. We are seeing the raiding cavalry returning back over onto this location. Could be tempting to retreat out of here, or even just wall here. Here wouldn't be a bad idea. We are going to see an attempt. Uh, an attempted um, escaping maneuver here from uh, from Rappel. Do we have the sacred uh, charge? No, that doesn't feel like that's the right word. What's it called? It is. Is, is it called? Spirited charge, not sacred charge. Spirited charge. And do we have the upgrade here? We do have thundering hooves now for uh, for Rappel, but the wall not finished here, unfortunately. Uh, Madrius did not put that one up and the, the units will get out of here. Now we've got Ford Temple coming down for Lonely Fenrir. We've got the uh, Scardi coming in, deleting the temple so he gets the forward spawn of the uh, of the Frost Giants here on this location. All these longhouses coming up for Rappel. He's got these Ulfsark pumping out in order to try and deal with the Hippocon. The Hippocon raids now looking to come in and hit this. Will we see a raid onto this woodline or not? Madrius coming in and he is he's clicked right onto this woodline. He can see... The that the villagers are chopping down on this location. This is going to be a huge raid. Going to hit all these villagers. And unlike Madrius' villagers, these have only got 65 HP. So a ton of these are going to be falling. We are seeing a big push in over here. But we do see the Frost in onto this location as the army pushing in over here. Rappel realizes he cannot take lo those losses. And we do see a ceasefire onto this location. Matrius has got to be very, very happy about that trade of Frost for ceasefire. Not having to worry about uh, anything here in terms of a frost fimble winter uh kind of uh shenanigan and we'll see how this is all going to go 
Uh, we've got this kind of lull. And what are, what's everyone going to be spending their resources on here? I'd love to see a market up in this lull for uh, for Rapple. Simply put, it's one of those things that's kind of very hard to throw up for... Uh, is it going up somewhere? I just saw all that wood going away. Oh, he's getting fortified town centers. But it's one of those uh, researches, that's r technologies, I should say, that's really hard to get for... Uh, for the Norse players and super vitally important because you get so much extra gold from these dwarves Yeah, I've seen them running through this wall here as the Hippocon are not uh, not saying goodbye just yet, but Neither is Rapple. Rapple's gonna be able to take this town center down very fast He's got the uh, heavy old sark here and his Matrius going to the mythic age Matrius is gearing up to go to the mythic age You are seeing these old sark chasing down some villages here. This town center gonna get torn to pieces Matrius should be attempting to um, keep these of uh, this location alive for as long as he possibly can but the market not quite up just yet for matrius i don't see a market anywhere he's throwing up some more uh some more stables the units coming in over onto this location he needs he does need to get uh mythic age here but he's opting to oh he's got mythic age excuse me he's going heroic age no wonder he has no market duh uh, but now Matrix coming in for this fight onto this location. He's going to get some very, very good engagements with his Hippocon. All these units attacking. You can see a lot of, of Rapple's units in the back. They're not really attacking anything uh, worthwhile. I mean, the villages obviously are worthwhile, but not attacking anything super worthwhile. But while this fight is going on, let's check out the population. 123 population to, uh, to Rapple's. 130 of 140 pop. And with the forward longhouses coming down, all Old Sark being spammed out here it's looking like rapple can completely push matrius back here really really nice play from rapple he's gonna be able to secure this location potentially grab this town center for himself if he so chooses and i guess the question is where to now for for uh for mattress he should be throwing down military barracks here a military academy i should say making those a pass burst but instead he's opting to go into archery ranges uh which if you have enough toxodes it can be an answer to the uh to the old sark but i mean they've still got the 5.28 speed still very very fast very very strong we are going to be seeing a hillfall getting thrown down on this location these are uh, frost giants doing a lot of damage here theseus coming out atlanta is queued as well meanwhile we've got some forward stables coming up for mattress just to be a little bit of a nuisance meanwhile we've got a random goat over here for uh for raffle just um Causing some nuisance but by uh, simply maybe scouting out if the town center goes away. There is a little trick you can do. If you put uh, your your goat in a control group um, and it gets converted into... Uh, if it gets converted into the other team, the control group expires. So you know that it's been taken. It reminds you it's been taken if you notice that. Uh, so you could technically have a location scouted with the goat. Technically. With that trick. Giving away tricks. We're now we're seeing uh, the the uh, Hippolyta trying to snipe down this uh, frost giant over here. And now we see the uh, Atlanta moving forward, trying to take down some more of these units. Let's see what's happening with the frost giant over here. Oh, frost giant hits the Nemean lion, but we've got the Therm frost giants now in. Rhyme being researched. That's going to keep these Frost Giants alive for a much longer period of time, giving them an extra 200 HP or so. 200 HP? 198 HP. Basically 200 HP. Um, but it's looking as if Matrius is managing to push back here. But the question is going to be, what is Mr. Rapple doing? He's throwing up his market. There is potential for a Ragnarok Gold Staff uh, or even simply just a standard Fimble Winter here could be pretty brutal as well. You can see potentially um, Rapple could sell wood, buy food, and uh, and basically make it to the uh, make it to the Mythic Age here. Whereas Matrius is basically on his way as well. The market is coming up in classic Matrius fashion. You have to put it about a foot away from the uh, the side of the map when you're playing anything other than Gaia, it would seem. Uh, now we've got the Hippocon pushing in, taking down the, uh, the Raiding Cavalry, taking down everything here uh, on this location, pushing off this gold here. We see uh, Rapple pushing back over onto his back gold mine. The market is up. And the question is, will we see any advance time? No, we're not seeing it. No food in the bank for uh, for Rapple. No advance time just yet for Matrius as he's getting sort of pushed back here by those Frost Giants. Now 
we're starting to see finally seeing those military academies come down. And we've got Artemis. Artemis on the way for Mattress. The question is now, can you go, realistically, can you go for Chimera in this situation? I think the answer is no. Uh, these Frost Giants, a little bit too strong, um, but... Maybe we'll see some villagers coming over onto the temple. Maybe not. Maybe it's better to simply just um, utilize this for whatever you can, whatever you want to do. Uh, and let's see what we've got here. We do have Tier coming in for Rappel. So uh, Rappel, not a fan of the Ragnarok at all. There is there is more than enough chance for uh, for the Norse players to win the late game against. Uh, a Poseidon player utilizing their infantry to get in side builds, to get in uh, walls everywhere, doing all the good stuff. But the Hapaspas coming now going to really shut down Rappel's infantry units. Rappel may be wanting to go in with Berserker Gang, Ulfsark here to soup up these guys even more. Uh, having only 100 HP at heavy is, is pretty lackluster, but when you get Berserker Gang, when you get champion infantry, these Ulfsarks start hitting pretty hard, but the Hapaspas do shut them down very, very handily. Um, so we'll see how this is going to go. Uh, but Matrias has got this town center sort of secured here and preventing Rappel from grabbing that one. So that's really, really good right now for uh, for Matrias. And we'll see what uh, what Matrias's plans are. He's got the uh, fortress up, and this is potentially to start making Heliopoli. They are so ridiculously strong at this point in the game. Uh, though that being said. Frost Giants, really, really good counter for Heliopoli as well. Uh, so maybe Matrius just gets out the uh, Polar Formes in order to try and deal with those Frost Giants and, and sees what he can do here. But I think at this point now, um, Rappel just is going, I, I need to wait for my Fimble Winter. I'm going to turn around and go fight. Hit the, uh, hit the Fimble Winter, get the upgrades, all the good stuff. There's the Earthquake there onto the home base. And we see that he just manages to get to the Mythic Age there. That could have been an absolute disaster for, uh, oh god, he converted it into Ulfsark, and these Ulfsark all died instantly because of how uh, how the damage calculations work there. Um, if the Earthquake has got a max amount of, oh, we see a raid onto this uh, location, but Earthquake's got a max amount of damage on units, max amount of damage on buildings, and a max amount of damage on villages. So if that's all the damage to the villages, and then you convert it into Ulfsark, it's going to do more damage than it otherwise should have to those units. So a little bit early of a conversion there from uh, from Rappel. These villages all feeling a lot of pain. Meanwhile, pushing onto this location, the Chimera getting away with murder here, but it does get frosted, but that doesn't mean it's dead. You still have to have the units to hold on here, but looks like uh, Rappel is kind of getting uh, completely outclassed here in this position as it's seeming like Matrius is being able to defend nicely. He's not really losing anything. We see more walls coming up for Matrius. I'm um, getting good security of his entire locations over here. And now we see the heavy uh, heavy infantry coming in. The Chimera uh, is unfrozen, ready to start executing some villagers, chucking them on the barbecue, getting some... Uh, some rub out, some uh, beautiful, beautiful spices, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a bit of uh, a bit of a burner. And these uh, these dwarves will become real tasty. But right now, he doesn't even need them because the Hippogon are just completely destroying all of these villagers sitting in the middle of the map. And a lot of this is simply put because Rappel has not invested the time into walling here, into walling here, and into walling here. Very, very simple. One or two Olsark over there at any point in the game. And he would have been in a very similar position. Probably could have even defended against this. But now we've got the villagers starting to produce. We've got the third town center up for Rappel. We see him moving forward with these Olsark. Going for a side build, it looks like. Potentially going to push through the walls or something like that. Has to give it away that he wants to go over there. But at this point... Rappel's in a really, really difficult position. He's sending his villagers over here onto this gold mine. Very little gold in the bank. Lots of villagers still. Still has all these units, but now we've got the Heliopolis, uh, our Heliopoli, excuse me, with two of them here. Going to be taking down these uh, these throwing axemen very, very nicely. Now, the throwing axemen, unlike Toxodes, do do a decent amount of damage to the Heliopoli when they only have 5% hack armor. Uh, but they only do 5.4 damage, so it's not that much really, but still, still very, very good. Uh, we see... Uh, more units pushing in, trying to take these down the uh, fortress for Matrius. Not able to get up just yet as Rappel holding on over here. Still going for raids. Still going for all the good stuff. We see the Ulfsark pushing through this location here. Uh, still trying to get in onto this spot here. We see another wall up for uh, for Matrius. And we'll see if Matrius is going to make any reaction to this and he is he's sending over the chimera this is going to be a brutal amount of damage here onto these units if he uh, if he catches them and 
he does catch them, does a ton of damage here. The, uh, the Olf Sark's turning around, and we'll see he is going to try and micro the Olf Sark away. Moving on to this position, throw some long houses down over here. If he can get those up, it's going to be huge. He just needs to run these guys away, potentially. And he could just send more Olf Sark through. Maybe some Hursa in on this location could be a good idea, but they are. We've got that pass pistol over here. That's going to shut that side build down, but it is causing a lot of distractions here. We've got the market now starting to set up for Rapple. And do we have the setup for Matrius? Not just yet. Matrius' is economy, he's starting the Donkey Caravans now. He's got a couple of them, actually. So Matrius' economy, a little bit struggle town. He doesn't have all of his upgrades, but he does have the important ones. He's got Irrigation, he's got Shaft Mine. Flood Control is really good as well for Greek, I believe. But um, he, he does have the good ones. And also Bosaur, pretty good as well. Uh, and let's check out Rapple's upgrades. He has all the important ones. Getting Irrigation plus Winter Harvest is huge. The difference between Winter Harvest Irrigation and Winter Harvest Flood Control isn't that much. Yes, you should get it, but it's not as much as you think. It's not worth all of the resources unless you can really afford it. Um, so really good upgrades here for Rapple, and that's why his food situation is uh, skyrocketing. He's still able to push in really, really nicely, take a whole bunch of stuff out. And we'll see this military academy getting taken down. This longhouse has been denied for the time being. The wall's coming back up now for Matrius to hold this position. We'll see if he can hold this position over here. But it is looking as if Matrius is super struggle town in terms of uh, in terms of economy here. 127, 145 uh, villages. The uh, economy of Rapple in this game is just booming out of control. He's just, just got too many resources. And I honestly think a lot of this is to do with that Winter Harvest upgrade. It's super, super strong. Now we've got the portable ram coming through. Going to try and take down this fortress. Really nice usage of this siege weapon here. A lot of the time we see people going, I'm going to build ba Baluster because that's my Mythic Age tech. But in reality, Baluster are a hyper -like late game techno uh, unit. Um, not technology, a hyper late game siege weapon. And the, and the, the portable ram is like that mid to early late game siege weapon. Because it tanks a lot more than the Ballister, basically. And we will be seeing this going down. Now, what's happening over here? The unit's looking for some raids going after some of those villages that are on this town center. The town center not able to target these. That's an auto-target for you. You have to do that one there. Now we see the, uh, the Frost Giant taking out the Chimera over here. Hippolyta getting some damage in to take down the Frost Giant. And it is looking like Matrius is able to hold now with the Militia Flood out of that fortress. The Militia, so hard to deal with. It's almost better to leave the fortress alive in a way. Uh, but Matrius is still fighting to stay alive in this game. Moving forward with some villages, are we potentially going to see a fortress on this location? Matrius has sent his units forward. He doesn't have the wood to build anything over here. So I'm not sure he should... Uh, He's quite going to be able to do that. And we see another Chimera coming through for Matrius. He does have five villagers on the favor, pumping these Chimera out fairly quickly. His villagers sitting idle up here for Matrius. We'll see what he's going to do with them. And now we see Matrius pushing forward. Going to try and take down these... Uh, He's throwing Axemen, doing some nice jobs over there. As the, uh, the, the Toxodes are now sniping down all of these units of Rappel, and Rappel's now struggling. Why is Rappel struggling? He's out of gold. He's moving to the middle of the map to mine this gold mine, but he's basically out of gold. His, his market is awful here. It's just absolutely shocking. He needs this corner market. I, I mean, uh, not really. He just actually needs this corner. This corner to this town center is fine, but he's going to the hometown center. Why are you going to the hometown center? Just just do this and click over here. Not what you want to see. That's a big reason why um, the, the spammage has stopped here. The mattress has definitely stabilized in this game now. And this is going to start becoming very scary for Rappel very, very soon. Especially because these Chimera, where'd they go to? There's, he's got two of them out. And if he can find villages, they just barbecue. And we are seeing that Rappel is deciding to tap out in this moment. The economic disruption or something. I'm not... I'm really beyond the fact that the Ox Caravans are going to the wrong town center. I don't fully understand how Rappel's economy like just completely collapsed in this game.
think having to move over onto this gold mine was really, really bad, all these villages here. And no walls from Apple in this game at all. This is some 2010 shenanigans, if I've ever seen it. Um, but uh, honestly, the secret here is if you've got any advantage in the game at any point, that's when you wall. If you feel like you've got the, the uh, initiative in the game, for example... When Rappel was attacking this town center over here, um, when the ceasefire got hit, man, just send some Olvsark up and just wall your opponent in and you're going to be able to uh, survive a lot easier against any of the shenanigans that, that comes in. Um, but really, really nice comeback here from Matrius. Stellar play, getting those three town centers up. The Pipalia statue definitely carried him, though, in this game. He would have lost a lot more villages and been very, very far behind uh, without that relic. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch if you're on the YouTube. So hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next game.